if A and B and C were numbers, any numbers, and that's what A, B, and C are, they are any number, we would do the same thing that we're about to do with these letters. We would, we would approach it the same way. Uh, just imagine that we had 5, x plus 2 equals 10. Right? And we've solved equations like this before. Either we distribute the 5 or divide by 5 on both sides to start with. It's usually a common opening move. Well, we do the same kind of thing over here. So what would you do? You're trying to get x by itself, trying to shed the layers, get rid of the stuff that's surrounding x. So what can we do to, to get rid of all that other stuff? Ashley? We would, we could, uh, distribute to a. Absolutely. So we get a times x plus a times b. Keep in mind that it's tempting to try and take C minus AB and make it something new, combine it. But there's nothing to do. I don't know what B is, I don't know what A is, I don't know what C is. There's no combining this by subtraction. It's just whatever C minus AB is. Okay, we're almost done. We Divide by A, or this is, we talked about this uh, the last class, the classes ago. We get the X by itself, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times the last thing we do, we'll have number times X equals question mark. X divided by number equals question mark. Uh, fraction, right? A over B, times X equals question mark, right? These are three common things that we see that are like our last step. Either we divide by that number, which is what we do it here. If we divide by the number that's being multiplied by x, we're always canceling out that number. We get x equals c minus a b over a. Uh, here we're multiplying by the reciprocal, here we're multiplying by this number on both sides, cancel out the denominator. Very common thing. When I'm solving an equation, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to get pretty much to the point where I have something times x plus something else, or something times x minus something else. I'm going to add or subtract that thing, and then divide by whatever's in front of x. That's really kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen. So let's use the last two moves. Okay. We do it another way. We start off again and do something different to start with. Divide by a. Let's cancel out the a in the very beginning. It's a little bit outside the box, but absolutely. <coughs> x plus b equals c divided by a. Minus b. Minus b. x equals c over a minus b. Can we make this look like this? We should be able to if we can't. Something went wrong. It should be exactly the same. Well, for dividing by a, then we have to divide c by a minus ab divided by a. We divide everything by whatever we're dividing by. Divide everything by a. What's well, c divided by a? I don't know. It's c divided by a. But what happens when I take ab divided by a? Get b. Cancel the a. c over a minus b. Just like that. And the next step, what it's saying, it wants you to do, let me just get rid of all that. Saying, what it says, uh, 2 times x plus 1 equals 9. Notice that a has been replaced with 2, b has been replaced with 1, and c has been replaced with 9. So whether we use this guy here, or this one, or this one, whatever. We'll just put, replace A, B, and C with those numbers. We would have done those things anyway if those numbers were in there, right? We would have either distributed the two as in this example, or divided by two as in this example. Done the exact same steps with those numbers. And when those numbers are, when those steps are taken, we get an expression that looks like this. So we replace C with nine, and uh, let's see, uh, A, 
a is 2 minus b, b is 1, 9 halves minus 1, plus 9 halves minus 2 halves, that's 7. So if you're at a loss for what to do with all these letters that are all over the place, just put some numbers in there, see what you would do with those numbers. You do the exact same thing with the letters because the letters represent numbers. Uh, so that was number four, now we're on to number 11. 2x plus y, yes? You see next to the semicolon is oh, two. Right, right. That's what that was. Two x plus y. So we got eleven equals seven. And we're going to write it so y is a function of x. That means solve for y. When we say y is a function of x. Remember what is a function? Something you can plug in and get something out. Plug in and get something out. Functions are most conveniently written as. The output is by itself on one side, and the input is on the other side with all the other stuff. So we want y equals, right? And this side's going to have a bunch of stuff, and x is, is going to be a part of it, so that we can plug things into x. And then whatever comes out, that's what y will be. That will be the output. We're trying to get y equals, so what can we do to get y by itself on one side? Got it? We have to divide by 2 on both sides. Divide by 2, 7 halves. On this side, we get 7 halves. On this side, what happens? You get, uh, you get y by itself. Wait, no. Would it be x plus y? x plus y. The goal question. Does it does the 2 cancel for 2? Yeah. Well, no, because it's 2x minus 2. Isn't it? It is 2x. So, I don't think Canceled out and the two is So you're saying two plus y over two, the two's canceled? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. That's a good thing to admit because what I call this is uh, wishful thinking mathematics. Just wish this would happen, so I'll just make it happen. I'll just divide by two, and then that will mean the two's canceled. Why are the two's canceled? Because. What do you think? Should we, should we build our foundation on I hope so and just because? We're starting out on a low level of algebra here. What we do from here on is we're just going to build on that. If you start believing that thing, and you don't even know why you believe it, what do you think that does to your future? Not Ruins it, right? Your future's ruined. All your dreams are shattered. No. You don't want that. You don't want shattered dreams. So let's talk about this. Does what you want to happen, happen? The answer is no. Let me show you why. Let me first show you a simple example. Like if you had x plus y, uh, no, sorry, let's say 2 plus y over 2. Some of you may say that cancels out. First of all, if it did cancel out, what, what would I write next? Like, what would what would it look like after the twos cancel? Just would just be a y. Y. Would just be y. Yeah. It would just be y. Positive y. Yeah. Positive y. Made it a negative. Would just be y. Oh yeah, it should it'd be y. negative. No, why would it be a negative? I'm saying. Because positive. No, it would just be just straight up. Y. Okay. So let's say that two plus y over two is gives you y, whatever the number y is. Okay. Let's try that. Let's plug in a number for y and see if it works. Uh, two plus three. Let's make three what y is. So you're saying we just cancel the twos. We're left with three. Now it's actually working. Yeah, it's working. Let's look at it the other way. Let's actually do two plus three. What is two plus three? Five. five. It's five. Is 5 over 2 the same as 3? Do you, see, do you see the point I'm making? At least I'm saying there's an example, a counterexample, to what you're saying. 
just canceling these things out and leaving this as the result? Did it work with specific numbers? No, this using this, if we could call it an approach, it's not even an approach, it's just wishful thinking. Dividing that two out and then just leaving it as three is not the same as what we know to be true, five divided by three. I know I can add two plus three to get five, and I know that I can take that five and divide by two. It's not the same thing. Now, that's not a proof of why it, it's not working, but it is a, it's, it's proof that it doesn't work all the time for any value of y. I just plugged in 3 for y, and it didn't work. So it must not be true that we can just cancel things out like that. So now let's delve into why do things cancel in fractions, okay? We didn't talk about that, did we? No. We talked about fractions, but we didn't talk about simplifying fractions relevant now that we're solving for things. Okay. So come with me as I explain this. How about um, 9 over 12? Can I draw lines like this? Cancel out like that? Cancel things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What can I cancel? Uh, a 3. Okay. Now, why can I cancel a 3? This is very not specific by saying a uh, three, but say in this case we just proved that. Uh, say if I, I make this a three, why can't I cancel a uh, three in that case? It has another buddy on the other side. It's got a buddy there. He's kind of messing things up. Yeah. Okay. When we cancel a uh, three here, what do you mean by a uh, three? Be very specific, mathematically specific. Both of those numbers are divisible by 3. Both of those numbers are divisible by 3. Very good. Right? What we're really doing is we're looking at this like this. 3 times 3 over 3 times 4. And when we cancel these 3s, what are we canceling? 3 is a factor. A factor. That word factor. Have I, have I overemphasized it before? Nope. No. Okay. I'm going to overemphasize it. The word factor is very important. When you say I'm canceling stuff out, you can't just say I'm canceling stuff out and just wish and hope that, that, that I'm doing it and it works, okay? Uh, it, because there's a common factor, why does that even work? Let's talk about that. Because it's a very simple thing, why it works. So I take nine over 12, I turn it into three times three over three times four. Is this fraction the same as these two fractions? You tell me. Yes or no? Yeah. How can we justify that these two fractions are the same as these, this fraction? Times by straight across. Yes. When we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So I can take one fraction and turn it into two fractions. Right? I can only do that because three is a factor. Can I do that here? Can I do three over three times no, two? No, multiplying here. No, it's not multiplying. Can I do uh, 3 over 3 plus 2 over 1? Right, like the factors of 3, 3 times 1? No, of course I can't. I can't, I can't do this either. I can't do like 3 over 2 plus 2 over 1, so that 2 plus 1, no, that is not at all correct in common denominator. I can do 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3, can't I? Yes. Yes, but then what happens? Do I get just two left over? No. What is three divided by three? One. 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 I get one plus what? Two or three. three. Because everything has to get divided by two. Or sorry, three. Why? Because really this is the sum of two fractions that have the same, the same denominator of three. You come back over here, what's three divided by three? One. Now it's not one plus two thirds, it's one three to four be one multiplied, uh, multiplied uh, by three, three, three over four. What's one times three fourths? Nine twelve. One times three fourths. Three fourths. Three oh, fourths. Okay. When we cancel nine over twelve and get three over four, we're really doing all this really quickly in our heads. 
Although maybe not, because we used to think that we could cancel these threes. We were thinking it through. You can't cancel things out of fractions just because the same number appears. And they just hate each other and they kill each other and then they're gone. That's it's not how it works. Just because they look the same. Okay? So, can I divide by two? Well, yes, of course, I can do anything I want on both sides. We've already established that that is the case. Here it is. Back it up. Let's see what happens when you divide by two. Let's do that. Let's see that. So divide by two, divide by two. On this side, we get seven halves. On this side, we get the exact same situation as over here. We could write it as 2x over 2 plus y over 2 of the terms of the numerator needs to get divided by the denominator. And do these twos cancel? No. Now we're worried. Now we can't just cancel the fraction. Well, we can't just go willy-nilly, but does this work out? Is it the same thing as 9 over 12? What did we cancel out here in the 9 over 12? What, what, we cancel out 3 because 3 is a factor, factor of 12. 12 and 9. A factor of 9 and factor of 12. Is 2 a factor of 2? Yeah. Is 2 a factor of 2 times x? Yes, it is. Why is 3 a factor of 12? What's the proof? Because 3 times 4 equals 12. Because 3 times 4 equals 12. So is 2 a factor of 2x? Yes, because 2 times x is 2x. Or we can kind of split this up the same way we did 3 times 3 over 3 times 4. We have 2 over 2 times x over 1. 2 is cancel. 1 times x is x. But then we wind up with y over 2 equals 7 over 2. Here's where we are. We have x plus y over 2 equals 7 over 2. Now that we've divided by 2 on both sides, what do you think? Gonna hang with it? You want to keep that? You want to keep going down this path? No. Yes. You, no. no. We're trying to get y by itself. You, you think that looks easier to get y by itself from this did without the dividing by two? No, it doesn't. I don't know. Looks like it has a little bit. Tyler, death doesn't help. Um, the reason I thought we were dividing is because I thought two x meant like two times x. It does. Oh. Well, then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to solve for y. That's one uh -huh. thing that you may not have. We can divide, but we can do anything we want on both sides. We can have a giraffe on both sides, so that might not be and helpful. We divide by 2 on both sides, this is what happens. We have to divide 2x by 2. 2x divided by 2 is x. You know that from our this solve, like if we had 2x equals uh, 12, we would divide by 2 on both sides, wouldn't we? Because 2x divided by 2 is x. And we think it's 6. But that is not where we are right now. We want to get y by itself. Do you think this was very helpful, divided by 2? Did it make it seem closer to having y by itself? Yeah. I, I mean, we can do it. We can get there. I think we maybe turned right when we should turn left itself. So. so then we have to turn left and then left again. And uh, fix it. So maybe let's take a different path. Let's try something else. Let's start over again. 2x plus y equals 7. Look at that y. Look how lonely it is. There's nothing there. It's almost by itself already. So close, we just need to do what? Subtract 2x. How about that? From both sides. Yeah, we subtract 2x from both sides. The answer is always yes, we can always do anything we want from both sides. Uh, does this net minus 2x cancel this 2x? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we have a string of addition. We have 1 plus 2x plus negative 2x. Yeah, they cancel each other. And y equals 7 minus 2x, we're already done. One step. We subtract the 2x on both sides. And then we can even think of that as a, as a linear function, right? Slope, y intercept. That the question doesn't call for that, doesn't ask about that at all. It just says to write it as a function, y as a function of x. Remember, a function, as Tyler reminded us, you put something into it, you get something out of it. Now it's very easy to use this as a function. Plug something in for x and get something out for y. Okay, right. Plug something in for x and whatever you get on the right side, that's what y is. That's the output. There we are. There we go. 
Okay, so number 14. Y by itself. Right? We, I'm thinking into the future, just maybe one or two steps. I know I want to divide by this negative 2, but I know I shouldn't do that until that negative 2y is by itself. Think of the negative 2y by itself first, and then divide by negative 2. So? Let's do minus 18x on both sides. I agree. by negative 2, divide by negative 2, so we get negative 13, uh, negative 18, divided by negative 2 is positive 9. solve for a variable, just hone it on that variable, look at it. Now I want to get that thing by itself. If, I, if I'm going to do something that gets it less by itself, I probably don't want to do that thing. I'm going to do things that after the next step that I should take, there should be less stuff on the side with h. Okay? So something we can do, we can get h closer to being by itself, actually. Um, subtract 2 pH plus 2b minus 2b, those guys cancel each other out. S minus 2b equals pH. Right Divide by p. Divide by p. p is a factor of the numerator and of the denominator. It cancels out, divides itself. p divided by p is 1. So S minus 2b over p. by itself. The left side is very gross looking, but H is by itself. That is just fine. Alright. Yeah. Um, and 33.
To participate in a bowling league, you pay a $25 sign-up fee and $12 for each league night. Okay. If you ever think about joining a league, think about how many weeks you have to bowl. Oh, pass on bowling. I joined a league one time, I think it lasted like 12 years. It, it wasn't bowling. But it was a long time. It lasted a lot, a lot of months, all through the winter. $10 a week, you never really expensive. Think about it, uh, but it's it's uh, it's cheaper than if you're if you bowl a lot and you're not. Really. Yeah. So the total cost C in dollars is given by this. Three more. You just gave us the equation. Yeah. Does that make sense? What's this? How much you pay for sign up? Yeah, I don't have to pay per time, right? That's just one time. And then what's this? Twelve. Uh, how much? Oh, $12 every night, and what is X? Uh, how many nights? How many nights? 12 times the number of nights, right? If I bowl one night, 12 times one is 12, I add the $25 sign-up fee, and that's how much it costs for two nights. Well, I'll just take 12 times two, and then add 25, and so on and so on. And of course, C is the total cost. All right, solving the equation for X. Solving the equation for X. So start with C, e equals 12X plus 25. Just for you know per night. Mm -hmm. Divided by twelve to see how many nights that gives you. It's already done. You don't have to do that time and time again. All that work got done there. You just plug those in, subtract twenty-five, divide by twelve. It's done for you. The work is done for you. Okay, let's pass it in. Anybody want the cowboys game? No. Alright, so we're gonna solve this equation. For L, okay. Just waiting for you to be quiet. Okay. Play it every day. Um, so I'm going to solve for L. I'm going to get L by itself. I just want to do whatever math it takes to not have anything over there without. Okay. Please. Uh, divide by W. W cancels W, right? A divided by W equals L. What's an L? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an L. Yeah. Must be. That's what I put it. Um, right. On to the next one. X by itself. Minus K on both sides. Seems like such a breeze. Treat it like a number. I don't like to say move to the other side. You won't hear me say that hardly ever. But 
You subtract it from both sides, you do subtract k from both sides. k minus k is zero, leaves x by itself. Just dandy. And then we get y by itself. Solve the equation for both sides. Jared? I'm minus two x, so I say, if you're ever thinking to your to yourself, am I supposed to do this? It's not anything you're supposed to do. There's an infinite number of things you could do. And if you should do it, it's should I do this? The answer to should you do this is try it, make sure you do it correctly, and see if what happens is more simple than what you started with. So 2x minus 2x is 0. That's fine. We can subtract that 2x off of there since it's added to negative 5y. So we're not violating the order of operations. Over here we have 20 minus 2x, and then? Divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5, which gives things that. Negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. Should I write it like this? Should I write it like this? Should I write it like this? Doesn't matter. They're all correct. How did I get from this one to the middle one? Um, you just flip the top two. Flip them? Yeah. I guess so you just flip, so you flip things? Mm -hmm. Mathematical operation? <laughs> yeah. Flip. <laughs> so well, yeah. Why do you think? Oh, I yeah. I don't know. You don't know? Just know. Remember in a fraction, say, this fraction, negative 3 fourths. Just an example of a fraction with a negative, that's all. Okay. Are these all the same? They are. We have a 3 divided by a negative 4. Is that a negative number? 3 divided by negative 4? Positive divided by negative, is that negative? Yeah, it's not positive. Yeah. It's negative. It's negative what? It's negative 3 fourths. How about negative 3 divided by positive 4? Also negative. Also negative 3 fourths. So it doesn't matter if the negative is in the denominator or the numerator. It's all the same. So I took this negative, just applied it to the numerator instead. Now when I put it there, I realize that means the whole numerator needs to be negative, which means like I put parentheses around there so the negative applies to the whole thing. Now do we see why the top quote flipped? Yeah. What do we do with that negative? Divide. No. Distribute. Distributed it to so this parentheses. <laughs> negative times twenty is negative twenty. Negative times negative two x is two x. I want to write it this way. I just divide 2x by 5 and divide negative 20 by 5. Yeah. Uh, what first? What do we do? Ashley? Distribute the 2. 6x minus 10 plus 1 equals 3x plus 3. Now what? Collect like terms. I'll say uh, subtracted 3x okay. to 6x. Okay, we're clearing the bags off of this side of the scale. We don't want scales on that, or the block, uh, bags on that side. We just want bags on one side. So we take three of them off of here. Take three of them off of here. We have three on this side. We have, I'm just going to do negative 10 plus 1. say, oh, 4 must be x. 3 times 4 is 12, so x is 4. Right? Right. Right. That's what we do not want to do. OK, 
stay right underneath you. Like, start with a zero shadow. If it moves at the same speed as you, it will just stay right underneath you all the time. That's not what happens, right? Okay. So it goes from zero to very, very long, like ahead of you. Like, if someone is at the tip of your shadow, walking along the tip of your shadow, they'd have to move faster than you to get away from you like that, right? So your shadow must be moving faster than you. The tip of the shadow must be moving faster than you. Well, let's not worry about that. But that's a question the calculus can answer. If you know how fast you're running, and you know some things like how tall you are, how tall the pole is, and things like that. Five, three. You can answer all those questions. Okay. Let's uh, let's make this easier on ourselves. Let's ask a different kind of a question. It's like a sub question. It's a question that a calculus student would need to answer to answer that other question. So might as well talk about that. Let's say let's make things easy. Let's say he's six, six feet tall. Oh. Make these, these numbers nice and easy to work with. Let's say this light pole. 10. 10. 9, 10. 15. Oh. Because I just want to not do whatever you say. Okay? Let's do some math. Let's say that you know that your shadow is. Your shadow's uh, 12 feet long. You can ask any number of questions we want to. So I'll just ask this question. How far away was the pole? I'll say, how far away is the guy from the pole? I could have asked, how far away is the tip of the shadow from the pole? But that just involves distance from the pole anyway. I could have asked uh, about angles, but we don't know any trig. I could have asked any number of things. But we'll just ask something like that, because it obviously it highlights the thing we're learning. I was gonna ask if you like have a ruler on there. Can't you just measure like fifteen? You go from there. No, but it's, first of all, no. Second of all, that's a ruler class you're looking for. A measure class. We have that's why we have a measure class. Now we have. I mean, in the picture, no, you can't do that because uh, it's. For one thing, yeah, it's not even the scale. I, I don't know if I, if that guy's six, I don't know if this would be fifteen. Like if I make him the ruler, I don't know if this is going to come out to probably not. It looks more like twelve if he's six feet tall. So it's not the scale. That's one thing. And then there's just so many other things. The main thing being, don't avoid math. Don't avoid math. <coughs> X. Okay. Right? Question mark. We'll call it X, of course. So what do we say about this? What's this shape? Triangle, right triangle, triangle right triangle. A 90 degree angle. 
now it's a right triangle. Here's a right triangle. Any other shapes useful? Don't say car. Yeah, there's a car shape. Don't say car. I beat you to it. There's a rectangular looking thing green. in the grass. No. There's grass, <laughs> like a warped rectangle. So any other useful <laughs> shapes? No. I thought we were just saying stuff in there. Useful shapes. No, I don't think so. The yep. light pole. Maybe and body, like from head to toe, if you're just standing still. We kind of a, like make him a straight Shape. line. Yeah. Certainly we could. We, we'll just call the straight line from the ground to the top of his head. The him. Him, yeah. Right. So if he's standing straight up, maybe like what angle is he to the ground? If he's standing straight up. He's 90 degrees. Yeah. He's at a right angle too. He is at a right angle to the ground. So what do we have here? A little triangle. A little triangle. What do we have here? A big triangle. Yeah. I haven't had geometry yet, but we've had. Huh? Okay, cute. That's just cute. Is it cute? Yeah. It is a cute. Oh, it's a knife. Nice. Oh. Well, it's a right triangle. Yeah, you're right. It's a right triangle. It's not an acute triangle. Acute would be all all of them below 90. Yeah. So you have had some uh, some geometry. Geometry. You have had, you have covered geometry. topics. Thank you. <laughs> Well, let's see. These triangles are are kind of interesting because this triangle fits inside of this big triangle, right? Right. Like this angle right here. Talk about that angle. Tell me about that angle. It's cute. It's a ninety. Is it an acute angle? It is acute. 15 degrees. We don't know how big it is. We don't even need to worry about how big it is. But it's a small angle. Where is this angle? The tip. Of? The end. The end of what? The triangle. Which triangle? The triangle that the light source. What's that? Both triangles, right? That is the, the tiny angle in the very tip of both triangles. That angle is the same for both triangles. How about this angle? It's also a cube. It's only in one triangle. Well, can you tell me about this angle and this angle? They're pretty similar. This is shrunk down version. Are they the same? Yeah. Uh, we don't so know. We don't know. Some, but See, this is the thing that I, this is the thing that I love about mathematics because we can know. Sometimes there's things we can't know, but right now we can know the relationship between these two angles. I can prove it to you, and it'll be fairly fairly intuitive. Okay. Now, so both this man and this light post are standing on the ground. Mm -hmm. Right. Ground's flat. Ground's yeah. flat. They're both standing at the same angle to this flat ground. Okay. So two things are are at the same angle to some flat thing, some line. Then this guy right here is parallel to that guy right there. Okay, so let's look at it. Just a simple diagram here. Two parallel lines. Yes? I was going to say that there's some that are not congruent. What are? The angles? <laughs> yeah. The triangles. Angles can't be similar to each other. I said the triangles. The triangles are similar. Let's find out. Well, we've got this thing representing the, the beam of light that shoots out of this, this thing right here, right? Yeah. So this is the smaller triangle right here. This is the bigger triangle over there. The question is, is this angle the same as that angle? Well, look at it. you got two parallel lines, and you just have one straight line, transverse. Call it a transverse. It goes like this. Is a. This angle is A. Well, this guy comes along, it doesn't curve, it doesn't change directions. It comes at the exact same angle and hits this line that's parallel to that line. Right? So it must also have the same angle. Okay, so this angle is the same as this angle. Right? Yeah, of course it is. It's, it is the same angle. It's in both triangles. 
This angle is the same as this angle because we have two parallel lines and one transverse, and so those two angles must be the same. Oh, that was a monster. <laughs> so we have, what do we call it, Seth? Just uh, you try Similar and congruent. Same way. Oh, similar. Yeah. They're not congruent. Congruent means they're exactly the same. They are just, they are just similar. Now, what do we know about similar triangles? What uses are similar triangles to each other? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, it tells you the same shape and maybe their size, how much they shrunk from each other. So yeah, say, this yeah. is just a shrunk down version of this big triangle. Yeah. So just scaled down, or, or this big triangle scaled up from the smaller triangle. One, either or. Okay. Either or. Okay. So the cool thing is, I can compare this this vertical to this vertical, and it'd be the same as if I compared um, like this thing to this thing right here. Or I could compare the hypotenuse of one to the hypotenuse of the other. And it'd be the same as if I compared the two verticals. I could compare this side here to, like within these, the, its own triangle, this side to this side. And it would be the same as if I compared this vertical to this side. Right? Yeah. Similar parts of similar triangles are proportional to each other. So like in a similar triangle, we have two similar triangles. Here's one. Here's just a bigger version of that triangle. That's what makes them similar. This is A, B, and C. That's confusing because this should probably be C, this should be B. And this is big A and big B and big C. If you take similar parts of these and you put them into ratios, you set them equal to each other, they will be equal to each other. Like A over B, right? This leg to this leg is equal to A over or A compared to A. So he said, now in this fraction, we're comparing two parts from, like one from each triangle. What would that be equal to? B over B, or C over C. That's a property of of triangles, similar triangles that we want to use. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find this guy right here. So we try and set up an equation to allow us to solve for x, or, or set up an equation that, that will find a value that helps us find x. Okay. Take a minute. See what you come up with. We're going to see what you have going on. I got you. Set up an equation. I mean, Figure out what x is using this fact. With similar triangles, we can set up what are called proportions. One fraction equals another fraction. We've established that these, these triangles are similar. We know the property of similar triangles is if I compare two similar parts, then it's equal to the comparison of uh, likewise similar parts. Again, they, an example would be 15 divided by 6 would be the same as uh, this hypotenuse divided by this hypotenuse. So what equation can we set up so that it includes x and then we can solve for x? Here's kind of the challenge. Is x part of any of these triangles? Which triangle is it a part of? OK, it's part of it, but it is, is it a side of one of the triangles? No, it's not a side of one of the triangles. No, it's not. Hmm. So we can't just take, without doing a little more work, we can't just take x and say x over this is the same as you know something over something else. Like, x over 15 is not the same as 14 over 6, because x is not the long side right, of, that, of that triangle. Just 
just throw anything at it. Even if you know it's wrong. Let's just throw something out there. Trent? Could you change the X like in a different spot? Could you rearrange the whole entire problem? And say so you're trying to find the length of the shadow instead of finding well, well, I mean we could, but I asked it this way on purpose. Yeah. I want, to, I want to talk about the distance from the pole to the man. And I'm going to give you the length of the shadow. All right. So. Um, could we do like x equals 14 plus um, the variable? x equals 14 plus y? Yeah. Why is it? Why would we set that up? And like, what, what is y? If I were to put y in the, in the picture, what would y be? That's what we're trying to find out. That's where I'm stuck. <laughs> well, oh, okay, okay, I see. Like you're saying 14. Yeah, I don't know. What problem is that? Let's set up one of those proportions, though. Yeah, let's say, let's just take the two sides of this small triangle that I know. Let's say 14 over 6. All right. I'm not told about the hypotenuse of that triangle. That's kind of a nonsense length anyway. So that, that would be the length of the beam of light from his head to the tip of his shadow. Yeah. Here. So 14, that's the length of the shadow. Over 6, that's the height of the man. Those are two values that actually mean something. Can we compare that to some other fraction? Tyler? Do 15 over x. 15 over x, x over yeah, 15, x over like it's got to be, so you got to take the, the long side, 14, over the, the short side, 6. That's got to be equal to the long side, is that x over 15? Why not? Because x is just the part of the triangle. x is part of the, the bottom, but what is the bottom all together? x plus 14. You can set that up. Right? That's yeah. true. The long side over the short side is equal to the long side over the short side. That's how similar triangles work. What if we solve for x? What would we know? What is x? The distance between the light pole and the person. The distance between the light pole and the, per the person. If we solve for x, that's what we would know. If we solve for x, it's I bet you solved proportions before, haven't you? Yeah. Are you going to cross multiply and divide? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's making more work for you. I just want to get x by itself, right? I, I want to get x by itself. Let's use the approaches that we already know of. I want to get rid of this 15, right? I want to get rid of this 14 as well. What do I do? How do I cancel this thing down, actually? Um, do you multiply 15? Let's see what will happen if I do. Multiply by 15. Right. Multiply those together. Multiply by 15 on this side. Don't really care what happens when they multiply by 15. I want to make sure that multiplying by 15 over here is a good idea. Is this 15? Cancel this 15? It does. It does. And we're not sure. Well, this is just 15 over 1 times x plus 14 over, over 15. Is that the same as 15 over 15? That's what I want, right? I want 15 divided by 15. Is that the same as 15 over 15 times x plus 14 over 1? Yeah. It is the same, right? Because if I multiply this straight across, I get 15 times x plus 14 over 1 times 15. If I multiply this to get together, I get 15 times x plus 14 over 15. They're the same thing. Writing it this way shows me 15 divided by 15. I have 1 times x plus 14. And this 3 can cancel this 3. We got 5, we got 2. We got 5 times 14, 70. Oh, this, this also should have factored 2. So just uh, 7. So 35 equals x plus 14. Okay. Subtract 14. And x is.
Well, now what if what if 14 is instead of 14, it's 25? How does that change things? Just switch out. What switch is that? 14. 14 is 25 now. And this 14 is also 25. And it's all the same way. Now the thing is, the kind of thing you want to do with calculus is set it up so that I don't know the length of the shadow. The length of the shadow is L, right? And that L floats around in there rather than a number. But if I tell you the length of the shadow, you can absolutely tell me how far away the guy is from the light pole. You can set up these proportions. Okay, let's see, maybe if I give you a proportion, you just solve the proportion without writing it. Um, for Simple proportion. How many of you have heard of cross multiply? All right. So here's what cross multiply looks like. Uh, 4x equals 27. Can anyone justify why that works? And then 9 times 3 cross multiply. Okay, so uh, let, let's say it's, it's like right now to me. It's like a magic trick. And I'm asking you, can you explain that magic trick? And to say, it's magic, it's not quite an explanation. To me, that's kind of what you said, because you just, you're just saying, oh, cross-multiplication works because you cross-multiply. You know what I'm saying? You just do 9 times 3. I mean, I know it's 9 times 3 is 27 and 4 times 9 is 4. But why can I do that? Why can I just do that? Okay. I don't know. Sorry, I, I talked to you too much and you lost track. Oh, no, I didn't lose it. I just, oh. It doesn't sound right. Oh. Okay. Well, if it ever sounds right, you can do it. Just check in there. Do you think it? It seems like you're just really close to me. Yeah. Is it because there's no numerator and we're trying to. No? See, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was like, uh, no. <laughs> well. <laughs> No, and what I mean is I want you to just like, well, okay, this is how we solve equations, and if I do this to both sides, do this to both sides, look, that's, hey, that's what happened. Tyler? I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, no, I did do that to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to That's why I can't allow to stay in line. <laughs> okay. Well, let's look at it this way. Let's look at it, like, in the, of course, if we divide by 4 on both sides, x would be 27 over 4. Okay. Good job. If you cross multiply divide, you got it. You have the right thing. You don't know why, I would say we're in a new year. Like, we're not in pre algebra anymore. We're not in any previous <coughs> math. We're in algebra, and we can justify these things. And if anybody ever asks you, well, why does that work? You don't have to say, I don't know. Just do it. Okay, did anybody solve this differently? I know some of you did because I watched you. Multiply by 9 on both sides. Does that work? Yeah. yeah. We've done this quite a few times. We have x over 9 and it's equal to something. And we multiply by 9 to cancel out the denominator? Yes. And we can justify it like we did in the previous problem right here. Right? Uh, like this thing here. This is why things cancel when we divide and multiply by things. We multiply by 9 cancels out the 9 and multiply by 9 on this side. Well, that's 9 over 1. Multiply straight across. 27. Nine came out of nowhere. Twenty-seven over four. And hey, I just saved myself a step, right? Because to show you that cross multiplication is valid, what could I do to both sides to, to get four x equals twenty-seven? <laughs> Don't, Don't shy away. What can I do to both sides of this equation to get 4x equals 27? Actually, you can multiply by 4 on both sides, right? That's absolutely. Like, cross multiply is, like you said, a magic trick. It's not doing the same to both sides. 
that it's not a mathematical thing where I just multiply one part of this side and this side, and one part of this side and that side. That's not doing the same thing on both sides. That's not justifiable uh, by way of like that analogy of scale. But I can, I can now do the same thing to both sides. I get 27, of course, cancel over here, equals 4x. But then what do I do? I have to divide by 4 to get x by itself. Now when you cross multiply, you are doing multiply by 9 on both sides and multiply by 4 on both sides in one step without realizing it. Okay. I would like you to be able to realize that. It would be terrible to go through life using a magic trick that would be easily understood. It doesn't have to be a magic trick anymore. All we're doing on both sides, multiply by nine on both sides, and multiply by four on both sides at the same time. The denominators get canceled out, and we're left with four x equals 27. That's what cross multiplication is. But if I just ask myself, how do I get x by itself? I can multiply by nine on both sides. I get 27 over four, and I'm done. Think about it. Think about what would be the fastest way to get x by itself. Now, what about this? 3 over x equals 13 over 5. Okay, 13x equals like times 15. Equals? Equals 5 times 3 is 15. Yeah. yeah. Cross multiplication. It helps us out because. What's the weird thing about this equation? Where's x? Oh, the denominator. The denominator. X has never been in the denominator before, right? Right. Right. So we use cross multiplication. It's no longer in the denominator. Great. Also, you know what we really did? We just multiplied by x on both sides and canceled out this x. And when we multiply it by x on this side, it's not in the denominator. It's in the numerator. And what we do at the same time, we multiply by 5 over 1. 5 cancels that 5, multiply by 5 over here. That's what cross multiplication is. We're multiplying by the denominator of each side on both sides. So we're left with 5 times 3 is 15, and 13 times x is 13. x. you divide by 13? 15 over 13. Feel free to use cross multiplication all day long. But if you're also just thinking, how can I get x by itself? Let me save you some steps, and you'll understand. That much better. So let's go one more. X plus 3 over 12 equals 9 over 17. Okay, so I'm going to show you how in this situation it's a superior do not cross multiply. So I'm going to show you that by cross multiplying first. Cross multiplying means like I'll take 12 times 9, right? That's 108, I think. Yeah. I'm going to use a different color. That's yeah, that's 108. That equals this denominator times this numerator, which means 17 times x plus 3 means distribute the 17. Okay, so 108 equals 17x plus. 51. Yeah. Subtract 51. So 108 minus 51 is 57. Equals 17x. Divide by 17. X is 57 over 17. Now, I will not cross multiply. I will just get rid of the denominator on the side with x. How would I get rid of that 12? Multiply. Multiply by 12. No distributing. No anything crazy. Okay. We get 108 over 17 equals x plus 3. And then what? Subtract 3. Subtract 3. 108 over 17 minus 3 equals x. I'm done. You can get common denominators, put those together, and I'll still get 57 over 17. But that. It was much easier to do that than to distribute the 17. And then you basically undistribute the 17 again. You didn't have to divide by anything. 